Hey guys, I'm TJ, and in this tutorial, I'll be teaching you the basics of CSS. This tutorial picks up where the HTML tutorial left off, so go back and watch that if you haven't already. Also, make sure to subscribe, like, and share this video with others so that I can keep making more tutorials for you. Now, CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets. It is not a programming language, but a style sheet language used to style HTML elements. You use CSS to apply a style to an HTML element by targeting that element. And one way of targeting an element is to just write the element's name and specify the style. So let's target our P elements and make their font color red. And write P, curly braces, color, red, semicolon. That is our first line of CSS. So this code selects all of the P elements on the page and applies this CSS rule of the color red to each element. Now, another way to target elements is by using what's called an ID attribute. So let's say that we only wanted to target this first P element and not this one we would add an ID attribute here and call it here. Man, let's call it first. You can call your ID attribute anything. So we now call it first. And instead of targeting the P element here, let's just delete this P and put the pound sign and first. You see that? So this now targets our ID element and applies the, the font color of red to that first HTML element. Another way to target HTML elements is, is to use an attribute called a class attribute. So a class attribute is, is used to target a group of elements and apply the same style to them. So let's say that we wanted to target all of our list elements here and apply the same class to them. We would come here and add a class attribute and call it list. Now we would do this for each list element that we want to have the same style. So just go down and add list or and add the class list to each li element. And then the way that you now target a class element with CSS is to use the period and then write the name of the class, your, your curly braces, and let's make the font color of all of our list elements green. Boom, you see that? So now we have learned the three most common ways of targeting HTML elements with CSS. The first way was by just typing the name of the element, P, and then writing our CSS rule. And the second way is by using what's called an ID attribute. So like so, we add the ID attribute on the HTML element and we can call it anything we want. And we target that ID attribute by using the pound sign and then writing the name of the ID. And also we can use what's called a class attribute to apply a style to a group of elements or elements that we want to apply the same style to. And all we do is we write the class attribute on the HTML element and then name it anything that we want. But we make sure to put this attribute with the same name on each element that we want to apply the same style to. In our CSS, we target the class attribute by putting a period and then the name of the attribute. Now that we've learned how to target elements, another major CSS concept is the box model. The box model says that every HTML element displayed on your web page is a box with these three CSS properties, a border, a margin, and padding. Now padding is the space just around the content. And the border is the solid line that sits just outside of the padding. And the margin is the space around the outside of the element. Let's use our P element to adjust the properties that come from the box model. And let's start by first adjusting our padding. So delete all of this and open up a separate tab, type in CSS, add padding and click the second link that says padding property. 
So this padding property sets the padding for all four sides of our element to 35 pixels. And down here, it tells you that the padding property is a shorthand property that basically sets the padding top, right, bottom, and left. So if we want to target a specific side, we have all of these, these other properties that we can use. But right now, let's just do all four sides to see how it works. So we'll come back to our CSS and type padding. And let's just put it for 35 pixels. Do you see that change? Now, let's change our border property. And again, we just look that up, CSS, add a border, or add border whatever, same thing works. And just click this second link that goes to the actual property. Okay, so as you can see here, the border property has three items there. It has pixels, solid, red, right? So this is telling us the border property is a shorthand that lets us set the border width, the border style, and the border color all in one. Let's just use this one line border property to set everything all at once. So let's come here and add another CSS property called border. And let's copy what we saw there. So we set it to five pixels, make it a solid line and make it red instead. That is our border. And now the last property that we have from the box model is the margin. The margin is the space around the outside of the element. And let's look that up. CSS, add margin. And let's, again, always go to the actual property so we can see examples. And this margin property sets the margin for all four sides of our element. Let's just use the one line margin property that sets all four sides. Margin, let's set it to 20 pixels. Now let's, now let's adjust that and set it to 50. So again, remember that the margin is the space outside or around the outside of the element. So this space right here, this is the margin. This space in between here is the margin. This space between, between our content and the border, this space is called the padding. So top, top, left, bottom, right. This is the padding and this actual red line, this is our actual border. And we can make this border thicker. So instead of five, let's put it to 50. You see that? And again, if, if, if we wanna change this from solid to dotted, we just, we just do it like that. That is not cute. So let's change that back to solid. Now that we've learned about the box model, Let's start using CSS to style our web page and actually make it look a bit nicer. So delete all of this. And let's start by first centering our H1 element here. This this about me. Let us let us center this and move this to the center. So let's let's look up CSS center text elements. Set the text align to center. Hmm. So this is a CSS property. So let's let's look up CSS text align property. Let's text align property. Let's see if we can find something in W3 schools to make it quickly. Okay. Text align, we just put center, left, right, or whatever. The text align property specifies the horizontal alignment of text in an element. Awesome. So let's, again, let's target our H1 element by centering this. So we're gonna put in our CSS H1 and put uh, input text align and put center and boom, you see that? If we, if we change this to right, it goes there. And then we change it to left, it goes there, but we want ours in the center. And at the same time, let's also increase the font size of our H1. So font size here, let's set it to 60 pixels just to make it super big. And now let's target our P elements. 
let's start by first increasing the uh, font size of our P elements. So let's go down and just put P. And let's set the font size to 12 pixels. Oop, that's too small. Let's do something like 18 pixels just to make it bigger. Awesome. And now let us increase the line height of them just to actually spread these elements out a little bit and if you want let us look up CSS line height property line height normal specifies the height of the line so these are all the different options that we have with that and this is an example of how we can do it normal or just put a number 80 percent 200 percent etc so let's go here and adjust the, the line height and let's see what that does. Let's just put it to two. Okay. Let's see what happens if we change this to four. All right. Let's put it back down to two. And let's also adjust the text spacing. Let's letter space. Yeah, let's look at our letter space property. Increases or decreases the space between characters in a text. So it's just the letter spacing and we put our pixels. Let's see how that works. Letter spacing. Let's put three pixels. Boom. That actually looks a bit better in a weird way, but let's apply this same style to our list element as well. So up here, you, you see how right now we are targeting our P element. We can also put a comma and put LI, and this will this will now apply the same style to both the P element and the list element. And now let's let's set the uh, background color on our web page. Here I'm, I'm going to make this a bit smaller. So let's do body and background color. CSS background color background color property and you can just call it any any valid actual color <laughs> or just look up the CSS color values for a complete list here I'm gonna set my background color to silver which hopefully it doesn't look the same as what we have now nope it doesn't awesome and now let us let us adjust the border on our body and we already know how to use the border so let's just make it five pixels thick and make it a solid border that is black color awesome and also let's add some padding on this left side just to kind of scoot this stuff out a bit more so we are going to do padding left and let's see what five pixels look like. Okay, it's not bad. Let's do 15. Let's do 35. Eh, 45 looks, looks better. Awesome. And now let's target our image, but instead of using the image element to target it, let's use an ID. So we can just add an ID and call it a image, I guess anything that you want. The way that we target our an ID element using CSS is to put the pound sign and type the name of that ID. And let's uh, let us center our image. Let's look at how to center an image. CSS center an image. So if we want to center our image like this, it tells us so in this example, they have a class called center. And you see with the class, you use a period and a name. And then you set the display to Y. The center image set the left and right margin to auto and make it into a block element. So let's just let's just do this. Display block and margin left and right auto. So we'll go here, display block and margin left auto margin right auto boom now our image and web page is centered and that's it 
you have now learned the absolute basics of CSS from targeting HTML elements by name or by using IDs. Here we have an ID image. Uh, and then we, we target the ID here with the pound sign image. And we also demonstrated how to target by using a class attribute earlier as well. And we just do that by having a period and writing the name of the class and then applying our styles here. Those are the absolute basics of CSS. Now, feel free to explore more on your own and check the description below for a free sample online tutorial from my curriculum. Comment below if you have any questions. Thank you.